After we decide that we will use Entity Framework, one of the most important parts is to decide what patterns we're going to use. And here are coming repository pattern and unit of work. What we're going to see in that lecture, well, we'll speak about context in unity in repository pattern. We'll speak about objections, objectives, uh, the solution, web service repositories, and to the end, for unit of work. So basically in many applications, the business logic adds data from data storage such as database, SharePoint list or web service, directly accessing the data can run in the following duplicate code, a higher potential for programming errors, weak typing of the business data, difficulty in centralizing data related policies such as caching, uh, and an inability to easily test the business logic in isolation from external dependencies. Now, using the repository pattern, we basically use it to achieve one or more of the, of the objectives. So you want to maximize the amount of code that can be tested with automation and to isolate the data layer in support unit tests. So you access data source from many locations and want to apply centrally management consistent access rules and logic. You want to implement and centralize a caching strategy for the data source. You want to improve the code's maintainability and readability by separating business logic from data and service access logic. You also want to use business entities that are strongly typed so that you can identify problem problems and at compile time instead of at runtime. You want to associate a behavior with the related data. For example, you want to calculate fields or enforce complex relationships or business rules between the data elements within the entity. Also, you want to apply a domain model to simply complex business logic. So using a repository pattern to separate the logic that retrieves data and maps, maps it to the entity model from the business logic that acts on the model. The business logic should be uh, agnostic uh, to the type of data that comprises the data source layer. For example, the data source layer can be a database, a SharePoint list or a web, ser web service. The repository mediates between the data source layer and the business layer of the application. It queries the data source for the data, maps the data from the data source to a business entity and persist changes in business entity to the data source. Our repository separates the business logic from the interactions with the underlying data source or web service. The separation between the data and the business tiers has three benefits. It centralizes the data logic or web service access logic. It provides a substitutional point for the unit tests and it provides a flexible architecture that can be adapted as the overall design of the application involves. So there are two ways that the repository can uh, query business entities. It can submit a query object to the client's business logic or it can use method that specify the business criteria. So in later case, the repository forms from uh, the repository forms the query on the client's behalf. The repository returns a matching set of entities that satisfy the query. And now let's see actually the diagram, which is so showing the interaction of repository with the client and the data source. So a common backing store for data is a business service. This is exposed by a line of business, a LOB application. Generally, these business services are at higher level of abstractions that can standard create, read, update, and delete semantics of database or SharePoint list. However, from the perspective of the client, they often are they they basically offer often are the same to data source. So, like with SharePoint list, accessing web services can be complex and prone to error. Our repository centralizes the access logic for service and provides substitutional point for unit tests. Note that services are often ex uh, expensive to invoke and benefit from caching 
strategies that are implemented with the repository. So, the following diagram here shows a service backend repository that uses caching. In this case, the query, the query logic in the repository first check to see whether the query items are in the cache. If they are not, the repository acts sync of web service to retrieve the information. Although it, it is possible to access service di directly, it is also possible to access them through the SharePoint business data catalog. The BDC can aggregate several data sources, including web services, and expose them through a uniform generic interface. The BDC allows you to see standard web parts to display and modify data. So you may need more complex security option. If you need it, then use BDC support. In this situation, you can use a Windows Communication Foundation, for example, WCF. This requires you to that your own code and configuration data manage the service information and security context. Unit of work. Well, when you're pulling data in and out of database, it's important to keep track of what you have changed. Otherwise, the data won't be written back into the database. Similarly, you have to insert new object uh, you create and remove any objects you delete. You can change that base with each change to your object model, but this can lead to a lot very small database calls, which ends up being very slow. Uh, furthermore, it requires you to have transaction open for whole interaction, which is uh, impractical if you have business transaction that spans multiple requests. The situation is even worse if you need to keep track of the objects you have read so that you can avoid inconsistent inconsistent reads. Basically, a unit of work keeps track of everything you do during a business transaction that can affect the database. When you're done, it figures out everything that needs to be done to order database and as a result of your work. Thank you for watching.